Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Align Plans. We're going to be looking at some colors that I think would be a really great beginner ink collection. I have a few recommendations in each of the colors. So we have some blacks and browns. We have some shimmering inks, some blues, some yellow and orange, as well as some really beautiful burgundies or reds and some bright colors. I might actually just completely skip on the bright colors because what I really wanted to kind of hone in on is just sort of like the basic colors. And I have about three or four different brands in front of me. We have some Troublemaker, some Guitar Fountain Pen Ink, Ferris Wheel Press, um, as well as some Lennon Toolbar. And uh, yeah, so we kind of have a, like a nice variety where we're not just focused on one brand in particular. I thought that this would be really helpful to kind of see like what would be like um, a beginner's kind of basic kit that you can kind of look into and perhaps it catches your eye or perhaps you've been eyeing some of these brands or these colors and you just want to kind of see what it looks like on Tomo River paper. So what we're going to do is I'm going to swatch them I'm we're going to look at each category. So if there's a particular category that you're more interested in, use the timestamp in the description where we kind of break everything down based on color and then that way you can just skip to the section that actually is relevant to you. I have both my, um, this is a watercolor brush. It's in a size six thickness, which I, I love using this for swatching colors because with watercolor, it really is very water-based. So it allows, this brush allows the colors to kind of saturate in certain areas and then kind of sheer out in others. So manipulating the fountain pen colors or the fountain pen ink is really easy and effortless with this. And I also have my brand new stainless steel nib and I love using this because um, based on the ink, like you can pretty much write with it or you can just swatch colors with it, which again, super handy. And I have my water just off to the side. And without further ado, why don't we just get started and kind of dive right in. So the, the categories that I thought of was basically, why don't we just start with the very first one, which is right like closest to me. And these are all the blues. So the first one that I have here is the Pilot Erushizuku. And this is in Ama, Amairo. I mean, I'm probably butchering the name, but that's okay. Oh, and then we're gonna be swatching it in my A6 size. Oh my gosh, what are you? My A6 size Hobonichi Techo. I actually stole this from my daughter because, because she's not using it, so. Okay, next up when we're looking at more of a deeper, darker navies, um, I have the Guitar Fountain Pen Ink, and this is in Melancholic Blue. Another one of my absolute favorites, actually. And I do have a dupe for this, which I will show you, but it falls in a separate category. Next up, this is also from Pirate, uh, Pi Pirate. This is from Pilot, the Pilot Irishizuku. If it's called Tsuki Yo, it's really, really similar to this, but it's um, a lot deeper. 
and I didn't realize that I not only received a sample of this from Britney, but then also I ended up buying a sample on my own, so clearly. There's something to be said about this color. We're going to give a few moments to actually dry there. Staying still with within the blues. I do have a lot of blue inks, so don't hate. Next up is actually from Ferris Wheel Press. This is their Dearest Navy. It's more of a cool toned blue, but I love it nevertheless. Let me just get you guys zoomed in so you can see. And last but not least, I'm also going to be including, this could, like, I feel like this could kind of run into both blues as well as purples, but this is Albaloni from uh, Troublemaker. That's it for blues. I'm going to wait a few moments until, until this kind of dries and then we can move on to our next category. So we are almost completely dry here with the last uh, Troublemaker ink, but I just thought I would show you some of, the, um, some of the variation that you can see kind of within the color. So here you can, there's only like a hint, just a tiny little hint of red within the pilot color, within the pilot ink. It's still very, it's sort of like ocean blue. Like it's very like this deep, beautiful, like light colored blue. Here we move on to the guitar the melancholic blue. Totally different story and these two could potentially be like dupes for each other as far as how much of like that copper or red you kind of see seeping through, right? Which I didn't really realize like how similar these two are and then I will show you actually another one that's almost a complete dupe for both of these. But as you can tell in the written version, it has like that transition where some of it kind of looks red some of it looks blue it's very interesting and then we move on to dearest navy and with dearest navy it's in some areas it almost looks black and then in some areas it's like it's like this gray cloud like this grayish element it's very beautiful and then here i can't even touch this because albaloni has such a variation of green and purple and blue and it just kind of comes in and out of that same shade. So that's that's where we are with variety. This is still kind of drying, but the next category that I thought we would move into is actually browns. And I'm going to put browns and black. I only have one black ink, so I might as well just swatch it on the same page. So we can do that, oof, we can do that on the next page. And then the next category that I have is uh, sort of mustard and yellow and tangerine. Like I only have like three colors within that, but I think that when you see it, they're each so different and each of them are very unique. 
And then I also have another category for reds. So why don't we start with some of the smaller categories first. So we're going to start with like the orange and we're going to flip two pages so that we have a nice clean slate and then let's get started. So the first color that I wanted to mention in this category, um, both of them are actually from, um, from Guitar Fountain Pen Ink and this is Nostalgic Honey. And you will see exactly why I love this. Next up, um, this is more. <clears throat> this is more on the orange side. This is Orchestra Tangerine, also from Guitar Fountain Pen Ink. But as you can tell, both of these colors are really easy to read. It shows up very, very bold. And the last one, which is also brand new to me, this is from Lennon Toolbar, and this is called Tiger Aunt, but I will just pop the name right on the screen because what's on, on here, it's Ho Ko Pope, but that's more like the Japanese name for it. This will also make it into another category really soon, and you will see why. That's it for basically oranges and yellows. Now, I wanted to bring in the reds on this side. And for reds on burgundies, mainly I, I only have three on in this category as well. So let's talk about Guitar Fountain Pen Inks Opera Rose, which is like one of the most popular colors that they have. Next up, also staying within the reds, we have a classy burgundy. Now this, depending on which pen you end up putting it into and the type of nib, it just sometimes, as you can tell, it almost looks black. And sometimes it looks this sheared out, really beautiful mauve burgundy color. Which is why, like, for the most part, I actually, like, I adore this. I have, I have a mild obsession with both of these colors, actually. And then the last one, which is very fantastic for the summer, this is from Troublemaker. This is Lunetta Twilight Pink. You'll see in a second as to why. Mm -hmm. 
and then we're going to just wait a few moments and then we'll come down to the last two categories before we sort of wrap up but here's here's where they are actually let me show you a close-up this way I'm going to interrupt this video momentarily to show you my drink that my daughter got me. Apparently my name is Smokey and this is um, a cinnamon caramel cold brew situation. So from this point forward, just call me Smokey. It'll be great. Okay, looks like this is dry now and here is sort of the I don't want to say like the side effects, but like the secondary color that we can kind of take a look at. So this one has like a little, it almost looks like a speckle of like gold and green. I'm hoping that the camera kind of picks it up so you can take a look. Same thing here, it's really, really similar. You can not see the gold shimmer, but this one has some shimmer in it. No, stop biting me, please. And then we move on to classy burgundy and from the light that I'm looking at on both of them, there is like the shading of like a little bit of green that looks very stunning. Okay, let's turn the page a couple and then let's move on to one of our last two categories. So here I'm kind of like clumping everything together. This is going to be both black. I only have one black ink as well as browns. So within the browns, we first have, let's start with steeped umber, which which came out, actually no, I wanted to start with this. I wanted to start with writing desk. So writing desk, I believe has a little bit of shimmer in it. This is a collaboration that was done with, um, with Wonder Pens. And it is like the most stunning brown color you will see. Okay, so that's it for writing desk. So hopefully you can see. Next up, we're gonna look at steeped umber. So this came out in the fall and it was such a pretty color. Okay, staying within the browns and also with Ferris wheel press. Next up we have Oyster Hour. So this is significantly lighter. So this one is fantastic more in a broader nib where you can have a little bit more of a saturated version of this color come out. And then the last two, we're down to now the blacks or like the dark browns. This one is new to me. This one is Mazona Tea by Lennon, Lennon Toolbar and now I have ink on me. And it is so pretty. And last but not least, we have um, from Guitar Fountain Pen Ink, we have Antique Black.
It's nice and rich and very saturated. So I'm going to give this a couple minutes to dry and I only have two recommendations within shimmer inks so I think I'm going to just include that in the same page. One of them is a Starry Night Blue from, again, from, from Troublemaker. And as you can tell, the shimmer is like this green, very beautiful green shimmer. Let me just shake it up. So this is good if you're not really sure about shimmer and you want something underrated and you want it to have like a, a very recognizable everyday color, then I think that this would be a really good choice. And last but not least, this was actually one of my favorite colors when I first purchased it. This is, this is from, oh my gosh, this is from Ferris Wheel Press and it's Blushing Mushroom. And as you can tell, the shimmer here is more of a copper color. This was their like limited edition, but anyone, anyone in their mother was like basically raving about blushing mushroom and for good reason, it's so beautiful. Especially when you have your pen saturated with the, with the color and with the shimmer. So this is, I'm going to give all of this a few minutes, but you can already tell the shimmer here. It looks very really stunning. You can already tell this is writing desk is already completely dry and you can see like the color differentiation, which is underlying tones are really, really similar actually to steep umber, but yet the way it writes is completely different. Um, Oyster Hours is just your very undertoned, like really beautiful, like light brown. And then Mazona Tea, both on the written version and here in the swatch, you can kind of tell that it's just your basic, beautiful, dark gray. There's nothing complicated about it. It's very recognizable, easy to read, but still there's something very stunning about this, just the way that the shading kind of comes in and out of, of this tone. And now I feel like I'm really ruining my nails. And then we're going to wait a few moments until everything else kind of dries and then I'll show you guys a close up. Okay, so from the looks of it, we're still just to like drawing to a close on the last little bit of the inks actually drying. But I wanted to still show you the close up of what you could potentially expect from antique black from Mazona tea. Mazona tea is almost completely dry but as you can tell that it has dried a little bit lighter than the way that it went down obviously. Um, Oy Oyster Hour has like these deep ridges in here where like the ink actually it gets a bit more saturated. Steeped Umber has like this beautiful variation especially in the written format as you can tell. And we already kind of talked briefly about Ferris Wheel Press um, writing desk. And then here's the two shimmering inks that I really wanted to show you, both in written form and in, um, in the actual um, swatch. You can tell that there is a generous amount of shimmer in both of them. And the color is totally different. Here it's more of a bronzy copper and here it's more of a yellow golden. But the funny thing is, is that when we actually compare Starry Night Blue all the way back to the beginning when we were swatching our blues, the written format looks almost identical to Melancholic Blue, just based on how much red is actually seeping through. And I've had both of them inked up in my pens before and sometimes I actually couldn't tell the difference which one was which. So that's why I'm actually recommending this as a really beautiful everyday pen color because it's, you're not going to see this level of saturation within the, 
within the shimmer. So you're never going to really find that the shimmer is actually taking over, but you'll always find little specks and hints of it here and there. So anyways, that's all I wanted to show you. I will show you guys a close up in actual natural sunlight rather than in studio lights, just so you can kind of see and get a full gist of exactly what I'm talking about here. But this is all I have for you. I hope that you have enjoyed this and I hope that you know you had as much fun swatching these inks as much as I have because honestly this was like immense amount of fun for me. So let me know in the comment section below. This is going to be your question of the day. What is your die hard color pink color that you absolutely cannot live without. Let me know the brand name and the color so that I can actually check it out and I can kind of get a get a taste as to like what your preferences are. I would love to hear from you as always. And of course, if you have enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up, you can subscribe, do all of the things to support the channel. You just hanging out here with me, of course, just means the absolute world to me. And thanks so much for watching you guys and I cannot wait to see you guys in my next one. Bye.